Welcome to the Rich Feet Podcast with Dr. Tanisha Richmond. This podcast is sponsored by the Richmond Foot and Ankle Clinic, where they specialize in happy feet. Each episode highlights the best of Dr. Richmond's radio show, providing bite-sized clips of advice. Let's jump right into the show. It is a beautiful Saturday, October 24th. <laughs> I want to say good afternoon. Good to, afternoon. To Dr. Tanisha Richmond, how are you? I am blessed. Uh, my house didn't blow away last night. Isn't that a good thing? <laughs> Wasn't it windy? Oh, that was scary. Oh I didn't listen. I looked out the window. I was like, ooh, <laughs> this Isn't is bad. It? I'm having flashbacks. Yes, yes. It does bring back those yes. 2019 uh, yes. Memorial Day. Yeah. Uh, but luckily and thankfully, everything turned out well. Yeah. So how are you on this beautiful Saturday? I am blessed and highly favored. I am breathing on my own. <laughs> no do. one I know uh, personally has been affected by the virus, and my business is still open, so it's, it's a good day. Thankful, grateful, and blessed. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. That is great. You know, we have you on, and it's always a pleasure, Dr. Richmond, over the years to have you here. And, of course, we want to remind our listeners, and, and for even the new ones that may be listening this morning, we have you on the fourth Saturday of the month. So this is, in fact, the fourth Saturday. And uh, you always bring a plethora of information and education to us each and every Thank you. Uh, fourth Saturday. And we yes. do value you and appreciate you being our local podiatrist and foot specialist there at Richmond Foot and Ankle Clinic, 1323 West 3rd Street, of course. That's West Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Way. So do you have voting fever? <laughs> Well, my fever's over. I didn't vote it. I, You've already had I voted yeah. downtown at lunch uh, a couple weeks ago. It took Hi. me, I left my office at 12.04. I was back by 12.27. You were back at the office and by, had voted. By 12.27. That's awesome. Yep, and it was fast. It was, I, I have to give props to our voting board because, I mean, they got it down. It was methodical. We touched nothing because when you go in, you have to sign a piece of paper and they're like, keep that. That is your stylus. So you don't even touch the screen. And they're like, that is your pen. <laughs> Please leave. <laughs> Please leave with your pen and your sticker. And I mean, it was moving. It was flowing. It was, it was safe. It was secure. There was no rigmarole or, you know, all the threats that some people have been making. It was very quiet and peaceful and efficient. And there is a drive through now. So if you are disabled, you do not have to get out of your car. You just make a right instead of, I think, a left. And you can drive through and vote. So, I mean, they're making it super easy this year for you. And actually, weekend voting, I think, yeah, it started today. So you can now vote. You can vote today, tomorrow, seven days a week up to the election now. That is awesome. And we do want to share. We've been... We've here on WDAO for weeks now, but just since you mentioned that, I want to give the hours out uh, just so that if anyone is out there that may be listening. So uh, from October, the uh, well, today's the 24th, so you can vote Monday through Friday from 8 to 6, mm -hmm. today from 8 to 4, and Sunday, tomorrow from 1 to 5. Starting Monday, October the 26th through November 1st, Monday through Friday, they extend it on extra hour, so it's 8 to 7, oh, okay. starting on Monday. So next week, Monday uh, through Friday, 8 to 7. Next Saturday, same time as today, 8 to 4. Next Sunday, same time as tomorrow, 1 to 5. Yes. So Sunday's 1 to 5, Saturday's like today, 8 to 4. So you've got time to go vote today. Yes, you can decide. still go vote. And parking is free. Parking is absolutely free. How yes. nice. So they have made yes. really it convenient. And yes, the gate is open. You just ride out. County and our board of elections, yes. our, our Mayor Ryan McGlynn and all the work she's done. And she's here every Tuesday uh, mentioning this. And she will be back this Tuesday to talk more about voting. So do exercise your right and make your choices as you so see fit. Yes. So what are we talking <laughs> about today? Well, so in my office, I have started a new treatment. It's ARP, ARP wave therapy, which is a new way to treat chronic pain. And um, oh, it's millions of us, yes, millions yes, of us, because so I'm going to throw myself in yes, there. Yes, we're all uh, there. Yes, because I actually have a bulging disc in my back. I've had one in my back for five years. 
And actually, when I first had it, I could not walk. I mean, that pain, it, Sharp pain. It, it's it's an unbelievable pain. It's, it's a pain that make you figure out. <laughs> Take this to another level. About yes. <laughs> and, um, and I actually tried drugs, the common drugs that I talk about for a uh, nerve pain. And unfortunately, I couldn't tolerate the side effects of that pain, those medications. I even tried narcotics. I did what patients do. We tried some stuff. And that didn't work. And actually, uh, my friend is a neurologist. She actually trained here. She's African-American. She's actually in New Orleans now, but she's an MS specialist. And when I was diagnosed, she told me, you cannot have shots. You cannot have surgery. She said, you're too young. You have to figure out a way not to, you know, have surgery or injections in your back. So someone saw me walking crooked. <laughs> they were like, what? just because of shooting pain, right? You had to walk a certain Yeah, you, you walked that, I guess that back pain walk. And uh, she was like, well, why don't you try reflexology? And she introduced me to a reflexologist. And I did a couple sessions with her and it didn't work. But the reflexologist's sister taught Pilates. And so I started trying the Pilates. And five years later, I still do Pilates. I do Pilates once a week. Um, I do it with a personal trainer over at the uh, it's a fitness center right across from uh, Fuyao with a personal trainer, a Pilates instructor. And then I see a chiropractor about bi-weekly for adjustments and I'm paying free. And, you know, I didn't believe like I should have believed, but when the pandemic hit and I couldn't do months, my pain started coming back and the stiffness. So definitely could tell the difference. Oh yes. The stiffness started coming back, uh, numbness, uh, not some pain, but it, you know, I couldn't, well, I don't bounce around like I used to anyway, but I could bounce even less. <laughs> you were limited. Yes, yeah, so I was very stiff. <laughs> and so actually a lady uh, reached out to me on LinkedIn about this device. And she said, I'll bring it to your office. I'll let you try it. I'll let your staff try it. Interview some patients to see it with the symptoms that it can treat and see what they, if they like it. And we Brought her in. We tried it on some patients. They loved it. And these, and I uh, probably had it probably about three or four months. Actually, I'm running commercials on it right now. It should be, people are seeing me on TV talking about the device. But basically, it's a device that basically retrains nerves and muscle tissue. And it kind of takes tissue from what's called a chronic stage to acute. So basically, we we become chronic in a lot of things in our bodies. And once that happens, the body kind of just goes to sleep. It doesn't really do what it needs to do to heal itself. And this device finds those different nerves and muscle tissue and it re-stimulates it. And then the body reheals itself. So, and I love it because being a podiatrist, even though I deal only with the feet, I see all the... I know all the reasons why a person's feet may burn or tingle. And usually the number one reason is back pain. It's like a bulging disc. It's arthritis of the spine. So that back pain will cause that shooting pain to go all the way down, <laughs> down to the, the legs. Because yeah. the, I always describe the spine is like a breaker box to the body. If you look at a breaker box, if you flip certain switches, lights, same thing in the body. But in the low, in the spine, the lower spine, the part that hits right before your butt crack, that's your lower spine. If there's any kind of compression, irritation, arthritis, bulging disc of that part of the spine, you'll feel it in your legs. Okay. So generally, the first question, a patient will come in and they'll say, oh, my feet burn. I have numbness, tingling, and burning in my feet. First question is, are you diabetic? No. What's wrong with your lower back? <laughs> and then they'll start telling me, oh, I, I think I got a bulging disc. I got some arthritis. I got a pinched nerve. I fell out of a truck. I jumped, I jumped out the window. Wow. <laughs> and then, so the next question is, what are you doing to address your back? Well, they said nothing. So then I usually will refer them to a spine specialist and then to work up their back. So when you have those kind of issues, you need x-rays, you need MRIs, you need to know 
a doctor, a specialist needs to know what exactly is going on with your spine. But then in the meantime, this device can actually help with that pain. So I brought that in because most of the treatments now for chronic pain, pretty much across the board, involve either drugs or injections, spinal injections. And a lot of patients just don't want that. And the doctor, well, I don't want it personally, and I know my patients don't want it. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, I think that it's just a good alternative to uh, treating chronic pain, especially with what's going on with the uh, the opioid epidemic. And now we're actually starting to spike again because of the stress of the pandemic is causing people to you know start using drugs and things of that nature it i i want to just give my patients something else to treat their chronic pain that will not make them die <laughs> or you know overdose or possibly cause them more pain or possibly cause them more complications so let's talk a little bit about that neural therapy uh, you walk us through uh, start of the process and what one would be able to imagine or expect um, going through this process and how long is it? So it's about 30 minutes uh, done in a treatment room. Uh, actually, you you do need to come either in shorts or pants that can be rolled up to like above the knee because uh, there's nerve uh, stimulator pads put on your knee, on your thighs and your feet and your foot's put in water. Uh, water is like a conductor, so it helps the chemicals, I mean, the nervous signals, I guess, conduct easier. Uh, it's not electrocute you or anything, because we actually, all of us have had it done to ourselves. <laughs> uh, we can understand exactly how the device works, but it, um, and you, you're in the, so the machine, the trainer or the technician who does it slowly turns the machine up to the tolerance of that person. So I think it can go from like zero to 40. So you you go up one step at a time? Like every few minutes, it'll slowly take it up. And this is just re-stimulating nerves, re-stimulating tissue. And then as the person, it goes up as tolerance. Like we've had people who could only go to four or five. Then we have people go to 40. So most of the people who can go that high are like neuropathic patients, uh, has stroke patients who said she hadn't felt her foot since she had her stroke. Mm. Um, we have chronic pain patients who have just been in so much pain that the the transfer of the signal from feeling what this is feeling almost equated like something kind of similar when you hit your elbow and you kind of feel that funny feeling. It's not pain, but it's more like irritation mm. kind of feeling. And but so they're feeling that versus the pain signal. Okay. Mm-hmm. And so at the point of uh, not, uh, during the neurotherapy, does the patient say stop or? Yes. Yes. Like they, so the person, the technician is sitting right there with them and they're talking to them. They're explaining the process to them and they're telling them how to, uh, you know, how, how are you doing? How much more do you want to go? Do you want to stop? And we do it about, we do, it takes about 20 minutes and we do it about every uh, week's we schedule them automatically for every two weeks. And and this is an ironic part. They don't know show for these appointments. They're, they're coming in, they're excited about it, and they're getting pain relief. And I think that's the most important part, especially, like I said, with Ohio being like, we well, we were number one for a while for overdoses. Is that right? Yeah, yeah we, we were, were in Ohio. Montgomery yeah, County. We were, yeah, we made right. national news. That's right. That's right. We were. So to so be a, are yeah, so to be a physician who went from the beginning, during, and after that whole period, and to be able to offer my patients something else that does not require a shot or a pill, you know, I, I feel like it's a blessing and it's an awesome opportunity to offer to my patients. Now, do you go through uh, files and say, you know, I'm going to recommend this to... Well, most of the time I talk to them about it, I think the, they cannot have a history, I think, of pacemakers or blood clots is the one thing they cannot have. And we always do the interview and then I actually have posters in the room and then... We'll have a conversation about it if they're interested in trying something else. You know, some people, you know, just want to stick with whatever or, you know, some people like pills. Some people like drugs. But I, th- 
I think eventually, because the main drug that I prescribe for neuropathy is now a scheduled drug. Well, it's becoming scheduled, which means it's about. Yeah, explain if you would. I know what it's it's said, So it's yeah. going to be in the same class as a narcotic. Correct. So actually, our drug pharmacy board follows this drug because a lot of people who uh, are on and cocaine take this drug in conjunction with it because it potentiates the high. So they're finding a lot of overdose patients having heroin and the drug that we commonly prescribe for uh, apathy. So now the uh, pharmacy board, the DEA is now following these drugs as well. So eventually they're going to be probably as restricted or they're becoming as restricted as narcotics. Mm -hmm. So patients going to have more, less and less options when it comes to chronic pain. So this certainly is a is a great alternative for them to consider. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, I talk to my patients about Pilates. I talk to them about yoga. I talk to them about chiropractors, a different other modalities that are naturopathic to treat chronic pain. Because, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, fortunately and unfortunately, I have chronic pain and I found a way to treat it. It's not the cheapest way, but it's <laughs> with the least amount of side effects. You know, it just requires me to get up early one day a week and go do Pilates, which is, I would equate Pilates something similar as a cross between physical therapy and yoga. Do you think that you could do that on your own? Pilates? Mm -hmm. I'm Pilates lazy. Plan. I'm lazy. So you need that help. <laughs> and you're honest enough with yourself to admit that you need some assistance. I, 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 well, the thing about Pilates is, so they go through your history and then they go through your issues. So my issues is low back problems. And then Pilates whole premise is to work on the core, your core muscles, which support the lower back. So if those muscles are weak or I guess tight, then they throw off your back. Mm -hmm. But as long as those muscles are strengthened, they're limber, things are I guess in perfect synchrony, I guess you could say in the back and the muscles of your core and, and basically all your muscles actually, then it works. But I think at home, you as a probably a non-medical, non-physiologically trained person, you probably watch some videos and do a few things here and there, but you may not be working the specific muscle group that will fix your issue. And so for me, mine is low back. So she always concentrates on my core muscles. Everything I do is probably geared to supporting my core. And as long as I do that, I don't have pain. And with this, Dr. Richmond, you kind of, I'm sure, look at this as an investment in yourself. It gives you, it, it, ena it enables you to have a better quality of life. You can still enjoy life and go yeah. out and do things. Yeah, well, people. I mean... The prime example, the rich, one of the richest men on earth, money could not keep him alive. And I always talk about like Steve Jobs. There was no cost he could pay to stay alive. He yes. traveled the world, been, he got transplanted. He did everything he could to stay alive. And money couldn't keep him here. That's one thing that's taught me, especially being a sole proprietor business owner. If I go the business goes. I am the ultimate asset of my business. My body is literally my temple. And and, is, and I have to take the attitude, there is no price that I'm not willing to pay to keep my temple working. Because I know if my hands go out, if my feet go out, my eyes go out, my brain goes out, I'm worthless. I, I can't take care of people. So I spend any price to stay healthy because I know I fuss at my patients like um, for, as part of the Medicare screening, we have to ask about colonoscopy, eye exams. And, and they're always like, you're the only one to ask. So I said, well, I'm diabetic too. I just saw my eye doctor. When you see your eye doctor. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, and then the thing that I think makes me more effective is the fact I'm diabetic, but I see the negative aspects of it every day. I have like five or 10 diabetics who are blind. And of course, I have hundreds of diabetics that are missing parts, you know, missing toes. And then I got hundreds of patients that are on dialysis. Then I have hundreds of patients who have died from stroke, heart attack, diabetes. You know, they had an amputation. They're gone in a few months. So I don't need to read an article. I don't need to quote clinical studies. I could just tell you what I see in my practice because I just had a patient. I hadn't seen him in over a year. And I walk out 
walk in and he has a below knee amputation. I said, well, what happened? Well, you know, I just wasn't doing what I was supposed to. I just didn't listen to you, Dr. Rich. <laughs> I said, I see. <laughs> and now he has a below knee amputation. He went off the grid and, you know, and, and they don't understand the importance of just me laying eyes on them every three months. I mean, I walk into the room and I'm like, okay, which hospital do you want to go to? Because <laughs> you're going to the ER now. You recognize um, it right away. Yeah, I walk in the room. I'm like, okay, which ER? Because you going today. And let me call the vascular surgeon so you can see them today or tomorrow. Because you need to be admitted today. But unless they walk into my office, they'll think, oh, I'm going to soak this in some Epsom salt or some apple cider vinegar. I'm going to take these old antibiotics for my tooth infection from 10 years ago. <laughs> or I'm going to call my cousin. She has some old antibiotics. <laughs> so, you know, or it's just fear. They're just going to stay at home. And they're just going to say, I'm going to pray over it. I'm going to rub some oils on it and hope, you know, this gangrenous toe <laughs> miraculously heals itself. But when they walk into my office, I'm like, no. You go, you, you going somewhere, but you ain't going home. You going to the hospital, and and but what me telling them that and letting them know this is a medical emergency. This is something you can go home and just pray over. You got to get to the hospital mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. So I think, so that's why I think I'm so adamant about the aggressiveness with my patients. Cause for one, I have the same disease most of my patients have. And then I constantly get negative reinforcement when I think, Oh, I'm going to, you know, go eat this entire piece of cake. Well, then the next day I'll see someone missing four toes that did that had them last time I saw them <laughs> or, you know, they gone blind or, they're really tired because they just started dialysis. Well, let's talk about that for a little bit, Dr. Richmond. I mean, I mean, we're all human, and you mentioned about the cake, but do you, you know, does one have to eat the whole piece of cake? It's chronic. It's chronic. So, so, okay, I've been diabetic now. See, I was diagnosed in 2002. So I've been diabetic now 18 years. The chronic high blood sugars do the damage. So if my A1C, I think the highest I've ever been is like 7.4. They want you less than seven. So when I hit that, I, I freaked out and my doctor fussed at me. <laughs> and I, yeah, they fuss, but most time they just, we talk about other stuff. And I'm like, what was my A1C? Oh, it's six point something. And can you explain what A1C is? So A1C is a three month average of your blood sugar. So the American Diabetes Association magic number is seven or less. So if you're in the sevens or less, you're good. If you're above seven or higher, you're bad. If you're running like 10, 11, 12, that's probably an average three to 400 blood sugar, which will kill you. Mm. So time your blood sugar goes over a hundred, it damages something. It's damaging your nerves, it's damaging your blood vessels, it's damaging your, your tissues, it's damaging your immune system. It's just, I mean, I- so you certainly need to seek medical attention. Well, it's a chronic thing. So it's not like, like a person can walk into the old, into the ER with a thousand blood sugar and have a conversation with you. But they may not live much longer. They may eventually die, but they can have a conversation. So they're thinking, oh, four or five hundred, I'm fine. But four or five hundred over a couple years time can blow your kidneys um, get into dialysis. It can give you retinopathy, which blows the vessels in the back of your eyes. It makes you blind. It can give you strokes. It can give you heart attacks. It can give you neuropathy, which is nerve damage. It can make you get gangrene. So, you know, it does so many different things because you have to remember our bodies work on blood. So our entire body, blood courses all throughout our body. Mm -hmm. So high blood sugar is excess sugar in the blood. Just like a car, if you put sugar in a tank, it won't work. Mm -hmm. Same thing with us. We have a set amount of sugar that we run off of. Mm -hmm. And when there's excess of that, it does damage to the entire body, not just the feet. It goes, because that blood, you have to remember, it travels all throughout the whole human body. 
And I always equate it to the little cells are just drunk off in the corner. <laughs> oh, that sugar. They're not doing their job. They're just drinking that sugar. And basically, that's what happens, especially like in a diabetic foot ulcer. Yeah. Um, cells that can heal the wound, they don't work. The cells that fight infection, they don't work. Mm -hmm. Then the blood vessels that may bring the blood to the foot, they may be clogged. So there's not enough blood coming to the wound to heal it. So there's so many different factors that impede the healing. And then don't add a smoking on top of that. It's just, it's it's horrible. So Dr. Richmond, we're doing a live show right now. And for those that may be traveling or uh, listening at home and they're in their cars and at work or wherever, and they're saying, hmm, what is it that I can do to keep my blood sugar down or leveled? What would you suggest? Cut out everything white in your everything diet. Everything white, cut white. out of your life. <laughs> so that's white. flour, pasta, bread. Cut, it, turn all those brown or to a different color. So you want to go more with whole wheat pastas, whole wheat bread, uh, white potatoes, more sweet potatoes, sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes don't run your sugar up as much as a white potato. as a white potato because mm -hmm. white potatoes just turns just straight to sugar. So you have to remember. The what so a lot of people don't understand what a carbohydrate is, so they don't understand. So, say if you look at your plate and say you do a great job, you get you some grilled chicken, but did you put some macaroni and cheese on there, some rice and and say some potatoes? Those are all carbs, so that's going to spike your sugar. So, what you should have on that plate is a piece of baked chicken, you could have one carb maybe some macaroni and cheese, mm -hmm. and then maybe some green beans and maybe some greens. And then no ham hocks in them greens. No maybe, hog no, no hog balls. No, no. Look, maybe a little bit of uh, smoked turkey. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Cut up your little onion, little garlic. Put, you know, I'm from Louisiana, little onion, little garlic put in uh -huh. there. But you have to understand your carbs. And a lot of patients don't understand your carbs. And then they'll say, well, for breakfast, I had a biscuit. With regular jelly, some orange what, what, juice. What, what, what did you say for what? Breakfast. So they had a biscuit with regular jelly. They had a cup of orange juice. They had some coffee with sugar <laughs> and a hash brown. I said, that's all sugar. I said, no, you cannot have that. So you could have that biscuit with some sugar-free jelly. You could have a cup of coffee with some Splenda and sugar-free cream. And then if your sugar drop and you own insulin, you can have some juice then. <laughs> but you can't have it at breakfast. So they have eaten probably the amount of carbs in one meal they need for one day. So what would be, Dr. Richmond, a typical breakfast for a diabetic? And you can give an example of what you might eat for breakfast. So what should be, I would say, a typical I, breakfast? For for, I think, especially since we're getting colder, Probably a bowl of oatmeal, some butter, add some nuts to it, eating it with Splenda. Um, drink something. You're gonna, you're gonna like. I drink coffee every morning, so I have my Splenda. I have my sugar-free sweeteners, and that's it. But you got the so you got protein. So your body, you have enough to go move on, but mm -hmm. you're not gonna spike your sugar. Okay. So a lot of patients don't understand. Well, I gotta have you know that biscuit with jelly. No, you need a biscuit. You can have the biscuit with some sugar-free jelly, and it tastes the same. They always like, oh, it's nasty. I'm like, it, uh -huh. it tastes the same. I mean, you you gonna take a little nasty taste and just die. <laughs> So, but then, I'll, and then a lot of them don't understand that they have to drink sugar-free drinks for the rest of their life. So you uh, really do have to make that change. You have to make that change. It's, so that's, that's like zero power. If you have power aid, it's the zero power Well, aid. you just look at, like, I'm drinking, I drink Propel water. I love this stuff. I give it to my patients and they love it. I actually had a patient who went to the hospital because she didn't like to drink water. And I'm like, you went to the hospital for dehydration? That's it. <laughs> but I gave her one and she drank the whole thing during the so visit. She liked your propel. Yeah. And this has no sugar. It has flavoring in it, but it's no sugar in it. Yes. And and lots of times, like I have a fridge, a freezer, microwave, toaster <laughs> in my office. 
And lots of times they start whining and complaining. I'll bring them one of my sugar-free drinks. Um, I like the sugar-free teas, the sugar-free water. I have sugar-free candy in my office. And then in the, in the months, I have sugar-free ice cream bars. So I'll give them one. I'm like, taste it. And they're like, oh, this is good. So they're usually surprised about the taste of it. Yeah. Oh, well, it tastes yeah. Right. They think it's, oh, it's going to be horrible. It's going to be nasty. Yes. So, but I mean, but what you have to physically make that switch to say, I want to live. So it's and, almost like the song. You really do have to make that change and start with the man in the mirror. Not <laughs> what he was talking about. He was about all of us. <laughs> all of us. All, all of us. The now you need the man in the mirror with a face mask on. <laughs> yeah, you need the man in the mirror with a face mask on. Face mask on. Make but you have to make that decision that I'm going to change my eating habits and my life mm -hmm. to live. Yes. And once you make that decision, you can live. But if you decide not to make that decision, you will not live. And the other part of that too, Dr. Richmond, I, everyone wants to live, but you want to have a quality of life too. You want to be able to still enjoy life. You can enjoy it. I am a foodie. I love food. What's a foodie, Dr. Richmond? We just like to eat. <laughs> <laughs> well, foodies, we're... Like me and my girlfriend, she's a podiatrist. And before the pandemic, we used to travel probably at least once a month or every other month to go to conferences all over the country. Uh -huh. And our thing was going on search engines and looking for the different kinds of cuisine, you know, international cuisine and trying different types of food and ethnic food. And you can still eat healthy and with low, as we as we call glycemic index foods, which uh -huh. are low carbohydrate foods, and healthy and eat well and have tasty food. You, but a lot of people are just raised on these high carb foods because that was the cheapest way, especially if you had a big family. Mm -hmm. That's how you were taught to eat. Make it stretch. To make it stretch. But now you're diabetic and you just can't eat that way. Just like I tell my patients, your feet ain't that, are, are not the feet you had at six. You can't run outside barefoot and do the things you did when you were a child. Your yeah. feet are now diabetic feet. So they're in a totally different situation. Awesome. Dr. Richmond, we're going to go to the lines. It's 1240 here. For those that are listening, we are uh, enjoying this conversation with our local podiatrist and foot specialist, Dr. Tanisha Richmond uh, from Ruta Nation Clinic, 1323 West Dr. Martin Luther uh, King Jr. Way inside of the Dr. Charles R. Drew Health Center. Uh, you can reach Dr. Richmond at 937-228-3668. And of course, you can visit the website richfeet.org. And it is rich like a rich person, R-I-C-H-F-E-E-T <laughs> dot org. Let's go to the lives and see who's there. Hello, caller. Good afternoon. You're on Footsteps for Life. What's your first name? Good afternoon. I'm Dr. Worry Boko. Hey, Dr. Worry Boko. I'm so glad you called in today. I have some questions for you. So, Dr. Worry Boko, I have allergies and asthma. And the last few days, I've been waking up when my throat is sore and I'm stuffy and I'm wheezing. And I was worried about how do I know if I if I have allergies or if I have the flu or if I have corona? What? How can I know what's wrong with me? And when should I come see people like you at your urgent care? Excellent question, right? <laughs> <laughs> you have to come see me. The teams have all those things for you. So, so like the so waking up with the sore throat and because I know we've talked in the past. You said that could be post nasal drip. So, okay, so what, okay, let me ask you this. So the fever, does the, can a person have COVID and not have a fever? Absolutely. Oh. Absolutely. You can have COVID and not have a fever. You can be totally asymptomatic. So some people are walking around, don't know they have the virus because they feel fine, no fever, no cough, no loss of taste or smell. None of these symptoms that they talk about in the news. So they're like, I, don't, I can't have COVID, but you can. That's what we call asymptomatic, but you're still a carrier and you will spread it to others. And just because you don't have symptoms, whoever you spread it to may not have that same fortune. 
So you made me get a flu shot. <laughs> so what what is the importance of people getting a flu shot, even though it does not treat necessarily COVID? Well, it definitely does not treat COVID. We do not have a cure or anything to treat COVID. We that is not out here. No vaccines ready or on the market yet. So no, we don't have that. The flu shot is for the flu to help decrease the um, the risk of getting flu. And if you do get it, to decrease the severity of the symptoms. Because the flu, this could be happening every year, and for many, many years, we're used to the flu coming around. People do die from the flu too. So you try to prevent yourself getting very sick if you happen to um, get the virus, if you have to get the flu. So that's what the, that's what the uh, vaccine helps us to do. One, probably you don't get it. If you do get it, hopefully it lessens the symptoms so you can get through that illness and keep going on with your life. So I've been tested a couple times. So, so explain the whole testing thing because I don't know if people understand. Even though I've been tested and I've tested negative, I still can test positive later, right? Correct, because we're constantly coming to contact with people. So today I may be negative and don't have the flu, but I come to contact who has the virus. So we from the now on have to be careful. Oh, I don't know, two days from now. Um, my not negative test was two days ago. Today's a new day. So you can you can contact the virus at any point depending on who you who you're around. Do you do you know how long the incubation period is? So say you're exposed, how long it takes before you start having symptoms? Well, everything's always changing, right? That's the big problem with this virus. I'm watching the news like everybody else trying to get a hold and grasp of this whole pandemic and this whole virus. So it's hard. I mean, you listen to some of these news places, you can see they're saying, oh, up to 14 days. That's why you have to quarantine that long, you see you don't have the symptoms or anything pop up in that time frame, right? So I don't want to be the one to say a definite time because the experts don't even truly have this all down. So I'm not going to jump into that one, but it's, that's why we that's always quarantine for 14 days to make sure. Um, does have it. They say, well, you need a quarantine as well because you can't be contact or exposed to make sure you don't develop symptoms or anything else. And it might take that long to manifest. And then the first three or four days, it might take 10 days, depending on your body, right? So, okay, so you're, okay, so you say you, you get exposed, you get tested. Then when should you get tested again after the first test to see if you're negative? Okay. There is no, if you test negative, they like keep going. You know? Uh huh. If you have some symptoms or some reason to be tested further, then you then that's what you do at that time. But at this moment, my understanding is that hey, you think you have coronavirus, you get exposed, get tested, and then you wait for your results. Once the results are back, if you're negative, then that's all we got. Then you keep going. But if you're positive, then how? And then, then when do you have to get tested? Do you have to get tested again? Like in another two weeks? So, so in your your location, so you're you're located where again, Doctor Where Boca? Well, we have two locations. Um, our one of them is in Parkwood, five one three zero Salem Avenue, with an old grocery store factory used to be. We're in that plaza. Um, and we're also in an old Salem Avenue Hotel, which is where the Salem Hotel is located. Um, and then we have a location in Parkwood, which is 
uh, right off in Moses. So we're located there, one of the place, uh, Suite 100. And what's your hours at both locations? Uh, hours, um, to Saturday, Monday, Friday, 9 to 7, Saturday, 9 to 5, and on Sunday, all the travel locations are open from 1 to 7. So if a person wants to get the, uh, get tests, how long is the turnaround time average from your locations to get the results? Well, what we do, uh, you, we have two ways you can get tested. You don't need an appointment whatsoever. You just you can call us. We can take information over the phone, register you in our system. And once all that's completed, when you get out to our parking lot, you can call us. And we come out and swab you, and you're free to go after that. Or you can come on in. I'll be like, I want a whole physical exam, and I want to get tested. Well, then you come on into the building, and then we'll do the whole process as a patient um, and register you and everything. Uh, you don't need an appointment whatsoever. As long as our doors are open, you can get tested. So we do use the outside laboratory, so we test you and we send it off. Our turnaround has been up to 48, 72 hours. So okay. We don't want to, you know, come back sooner, but we get 48, 72 hours before we start getting all that paper. Hey, where are we going with that? And, um, but that does depend on their, their, um, as the numbers increase, more testing has happened. So, okay. Uh, for the most part, we got a good turnaround time, 48 to 72 hours. So what are you thinking about the recent spike that's happening? Well, it's happening all over the country, actually. Well, world, but <laughs> in, our, in Ohio, starting to, our numbers are increasing. Um, as if in, that works in the urgent care setting, uh, what is you as far as our behaviors or maybe incorrect behaviors? <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. One, people are tired. We work out here. We can't be tired. We keep going where I'm at, right? Yeah. They want to get the house. They want to go around family and friends. They want to go to the grocery store and be too scared. They want to, you know, some people want to go to the bar or wherever they, you know, you choose. But with that, we still have to be safe. Because people are going out and they're wearing a mask. They're getting too or something comfortable. Like, oh, nothing happened to me. So I have to be okay. My friend had it. They're fine. But that's not the case for everybody. It's a lot of people, because you don't know that they're struggling. They're sick. They're dying. So we can't give up. We got to still stay vigilant and wear our mask at all times. Good hand washing with soap and water. Um, you know, the things that they have been telling us, we cannot let that go. And the fact that these numbers are spiking is one, you have to do more testing and detecting. Uh -huh. However, but the second thing is, people are not doing what to do. And then we're responsible for that. We have to, if any person did what they have to do, we will get through this. You have to wear your mask. You have to clean your hands and limit your exposure to big crowds. So how are you feeling about the holidays? Um, I'm not, I'm from Louisiana, so I'm not going to Ohio or um, Louisiana for Thanksgiving or Christmas. And so I had a question actually given to me. So, do you think that people can catch the virus a second time, or does it? Do people have antibodies? Do they have resistance once they get oh, get the virus? Question, right? Because now the news is saying that um, people are infected. Uh huh. They had it already. I don't know if that antibodies or not. I can't. I don't know all those details. However, the people are getting reinfected who have already tested positive. Now they're getting tested again. Now they're getting reinfected, and they're they're. Even, even worse off, they're getting sicker, you know? So, according to the news, like I said, I'm, I'm listening to what you guys are. Um, yes, you can. So, we can't get relaxed because, oh, I had it. Woo, got my 14 days done. I'm going to do I'm good. No, that, they're showing studies that is not the case. They don't know how long the antibodies last in your body. You know, this is our first time at this. This is our first year. We're still, we're still within the first year of this um, virus in this pandemic. So we don't have all the answers. And so we don't know how long these antibodies last to help protect us like we do with other um, viruses. Um, we got to wear our masks. And, and <laughs> the holidays is a new way of living, living right now. But the popular word is living. <laughs> yeah. You, that, you wear your mask and take proper precautions and don't gather with big crowds. Unfortunately, that's what we're doing today. Yeah. Great honor, great honor, I love you. And that's it. Yeah, I know. Um, I, I have state plays today, but they're not um, letting family members can come in. They're letting family members in the stadium, but no one else can come into the stands. 
Um, so they're actually a little worried about that as well. So um, you know, there's antibodies. You know, people, you know, we know what antibodies are, but can you kind of explain what an antibody is? Because I know that they're throwing this around. What? <laughs> we'll just give a very, give a very basic, a basic uh, antibody is because people don't really know what it is unless they took micro like we did. <laughs> no. Okay, let me say the way I explain it. So I explain it as they're our gang. They're like our soldiers. And when a foreign entity comes into our body, the soldiers, which already live in our body, who are ready for this foreign entity, they beat up the virus and they beat up bacteria. But they know them and they're ready for them. But they're like, they're our gang. They're our posse. <laughs> Exposed. If you get exposed to the virus for you, your body remembers that. Like, okay, okay, you got this. So next time I see it, I know how to fight it. Yes, yes. So that's one. Or two, you get a vaccine. It's a vaccine. Like, that's the first of all these vaccines. Even when we were kids, we had those childhood vaccinations. Okay, so your body sees it uh, again. You are part of antibodies to that that virus, that bacteria, whatever it may be, to fight it. That's what antibodies are. They, they help us to fight whatever comes to pass. But you only get it when you've been exposed before or, or been injected with this vaccine to help fight. Yeah. If that makes sense. You know? So I guess you don't want to talk about her. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have her immunity from this pandemic. It's hard, right? And so that's, what, that's what they're... Okay, here we go. Uh, Yes. Right? Yeah. So example, children who go to school, right? All if ninety five percent of the kids are vaccinated. Because they all get mom takes the doctor, you get all your vaccinated. You all caught up. Perfect. But there's people out there that say, I refuse, don't believe in those vaccines, they do this, they do that. Their children benefit from the other children because they're all vaccinated and won't bring that virus or that the um, Measles, umbrella, you know, things to your child that wasn't vaccinated. That's the herd immunity. Okay. So if not vaccinated, it gets protected because everybody around him or her is vaccinated. It won't bring that to the place. Yeah. To the daycare, to the school. That's the herd immunity. But how do we get to that point with this pandemic? Right? Mm. This is all new to everybody in the U.S., right? So how many people <laughs> So that's years for what the studies, yeah. Our immunity is, we can't do that right now. Like today, right in this very moment, not enough. Yeah. Well, but. Do you ever want to get the virus that's killing people too? Because this kind of section A over here did great. Section B might. Die. Do something with that virus. So you said, I mean, it's hard. Yeah. So, so the best advice is. So, okay, so wear a mask, but okay, so what symptoms should they be calling, coming to see either you or going to their doctor or an ER? What symptoms should they be finding, Googling you online <laughs> to get to you immediately if they have these symptoms? Okay, so definitely cough, fever, um, now, but you know what? Even low grade fevers are a problem. A low temperature, 99.1, 99.2, people think, oh, that's nothing, don't worry about it. It can be something. 
this virus has a huge spectrum of symptoms to let me know severe and death, right? So you really can't overlook any of these things. If you're not feeling your normal self, and you're like, okay, and you know, you haven't been wearing your mask, you've been around other people, you're not washing your hands frequently like you know you should, you know, if you have questions, don't get tested. Come get that. Both insurances are covering the test, right? They're they're waiving copays. They're paying for the visit. So what the worst thing you have to do is spend a few minutes of your time to drive down to the urgent care, get your nose swabbed, and then you go. So you you don't do that new one where you spit spit in it. You don't. You still do the nose swab one. <laughs> I know they have a new one. They said you can spit in something and they or they swab you. I haven't seen those out yet. I have my different reps for different companies and no one brought them to my door. I don't know who I don't know where they at. <laughs> Maybe the hospital. I don't have them. But we have like this moment, uh, the nasal swab. Um, I've heard about these other tests, but I don't see that. And none of my reps and people in the, in the industry have them. So you keep saying hand washing. So is hand sanitizer effective? It's more effective than not do anything. So definitely, it's definitely, um, it's effective. Um, 99.9%, I didn't do a study, but that's what they say. I'd rather have, I'd rather have soap and water first. If I don't have that, hand sanitizer is definitely my next go to. Because it does protect me. It does help me um, kill any virus or germs on my hands and help me pre- prevent the spread. Of COVID or any other thing, flu too. Okay. Any spread of any virus. Okay. So once again. Yeah. Yeah. So what's your number again? Website and addresses. If someone wanted to come see you. Okay. So we're first priority earth care. We're located in Parkwood at 5130 Salem Avenue with Old Mercy Co. Factory used to be. And our phone number there is 937-529-4443. 937-529-4443. And our second location is in Dayton at the St. East Building. Um, the one over there is 937-723-7230. What's your website? And your website? Website is www.firstpriorityurgentcare.com. And you offer the flu shot too, right? We definitely have a flu shot. Come on in, get the flu shot. You want to get it now. While it's early in the flu season, so your body can build up those antibodies we talked about. Come get your flu shot now. So when we get into really into the flu season, you are already protected and your body is like ready to fight. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Wari Boca, for calling in and giving us the plethora of your information. And again, if anyone is confused, concerns, or have questions, just head on down to her urgent care in front of Burlington Co. Factory and Trotwood and her other urgent care in St. E. Um, and again, no payments are required, just your insurance and information that you have to present when you go in to see her. But thank you so much for calling in, Dr. Wari Boko. I'll probably have you back on next month. <laughs> All right. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye. Bye. You know what, Doc? You know, we get calls and um, great um, uh, showways, but uh, we always enjoy having enjoy having on and we do thank her for calling in and taking the time to share with our listeners here on your show uh but they all ping you as they say uh, as the doc that is always down to earth she speaks the truth <laughs> and she's down to earth and, and she tells it like it is well i mean honestly this is not the time to be hiding around no bushes and <laughs> playing and not being direct i mean we're in a life or death situation and we all i mean i'm diabetic i have asthma i'm a doctor i'm exposed on a daily basis so i you know having i'm I'm very fortunate to have a friend that i could just text or call and say i have this symptom what should i do (laughs) you need to come see me or you need to be tested or you need to do this or Come see me. You need to go on antibiotics. Yeah. Like a couple of weeks ago, my ear was hurting. And I'm like, I think a bug flew in my ear. She's like, come in. And they put me on antibiotics. It was no bug, but it was. So, you know, you have to just take care of yourself. 
And this is not the time to deny or listen to the social media platforms or your cousin who never went to medical school, <laughs> never took virology or microbiology. It's the time to listen to the science, listen to the experts, because these are the people who are going to keep us alive. That is awesome. Well, you know, Dr. Richmond, we do thank you so very much. We value you. We appreciate <laughs> you. We had a great time. It just goes so fast. It's yeah. hard to believe. By the time we come back, we're going to be in the season of Thanksgiving. That is even hard to even imagine. So uh, yeah. our next show is going to be actually uh, Thanksgiving week. Oh, is it? 28th, yes. Oh, I'll, I should be here. <laughs> I'm not going we're nowhere. Yeah, we, we're all kind of um, stationary right now. Yeah. We're, we're sheltering. Uh, sheltering in place. In place right now. But uh, uh, God willing, this all will, will pass over soon. But we do thank you. Any closing remarks, comments for our listeners today? Well, I forgot. I do have a new website up, uh, richfeetboutique.com. And that is for all the face masks and T-shirts um, that I sell. That's tied to my Etsy and Shopify account. Um, as well, and that my own podcast, which is actually the tapes of this radio show, who's on? It's on Spotify, and I think it's Rich Feet Podcast. Well, as I must well. tell you, Doctor Richmond, you're on our frequently requested phone number list between you and Rick Cool. I'm telling you, <laughs> well, I need Doctor Richmond's number. What, 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 what's the doctor's number? And some lady called you bless her heart. She called you a uh, psychiatrist. I need the psychiatrist number. What's the well, at least she, 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 no, we she can, she was yes, we, we, we didn't I just say foot doctor, yes, make it easy. Yes, it's <laughs> nice when they do know the correct term. Man, as long as they know what, what, just be in the area of that's it, right. you know, they we know, know what they're located, talking about. Uh, that's right, <laughs> we knew exactly where she was going, and so we did give her your information, as always, and all of our great um, doctors and health professionals, it does help us to stay healthier yes. and to get educated and informed. And we do thank you for sharing that every fourth Saturday of the month. Um, absolutely. Your phone number, Dr. Richmond, is 937 228 And could you please give the website? And in case someone just wants to reach out and email you, share that, please. So it's my main website is richfeet.org, my online store for my face mask t shirts. Hoodies and sweatshirts is richfeetboutique.com. Uh, Richfeet Boutique. Visit the boutique. You will be surprised <laughs> at all of the stuff that she has there. It's awesome. Yes, ma'am. Awesome products. We thank you again, Dr. Richmond. Have an awesome weekend. You we too. We will see you next month. All right. Bye-bye. We hope you enjoyed today's show with Dr. Richmond, sponsored by the Richmond Foot and Ankle Clinic. The clinic is located at 1323 West 3rd Street in Dayton, Ohio, zip code 45402. To book an appointment, call 937-228-3668, or you can learn more at richfeet.org.